Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. I'm Nicole Forbes with Dennis's 7Ds and today we are making succulent pumpkins. Um, this is just, today's kind of a drizzly fall day, uh, perfect weather to dash out into the garden, do a little maybe rearranging in your garden, some uh, harvesting of a few maybe dried flowers or seed pods, or uh, gather up some of your succulents that you have growing out in your garden. Now, um, what we're using for this project are cuttings of sedums and succulents in general. And the, the plants that we're focusing on are succulents that are in our area in Portland not considered winter hardy outside. So if you've had them growing outdoors through the summer months, it's either time to say goodbye to those plants or bring them into the house uh, in a very bright light area for them to spend the winter in a frost free um, environment so that they're able to survive. Now, if you are unable to say goodbye to them for the winter or not able to bring them into the house because you don't have the right light or something, then uh, a third option is to make cuttings of the succulents and sedums that you have and repurpose them into a fall craft project that we're going to talk about today. As uh, with all of our videos, there is a, a, a handout that accompanies this um, workshop. It is, uh, in this case, a step-by-step -step tutorial in how to make your own sedum pumpkin or succulent pumpkin at home. Um, there are a few pieces of uh, kind of critical pieces of information that I will share with you today. But for the most part, this is a craft project, which means you really can't go wrong. Um, you start with pretty material, you have a good time uh, and, and you're gonna come out with something that's beautiful and you'll most likely be very proud of. Of course you need a pumpkin. Um, that's probably the most important thing. I suppose you could make a succulent melon, um, maybe a succulent winter squash that's not a pumpkin. You know, Maybe you have another type of uh, squash that's a hard shell that will last a long time. Um, but the idea of using uh, pumpkins in this uh, project is that we have uh, access, of course, to a lot of different shapes and sizes and colors of pumpkins these days. Uh, and the fancy pumpkins tend to have kind of a, 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 an indented top. So rather than a, a full-on rounded sphere or top like a carving pumpkin typically has, many of our fancy pumpkins have this uh, sunken or indented top. I've already cut the stem off of this beautiful blue one, um, but you can see that kind of indented top on the white pumpkin and a really good example of that sort of squashed um, sunken center or sunken top of this gorgeous Cinderella pumpkin. So that shape of pumpkin is ideal to use. One that's got that sunken top or sort of a flat top so that we can design uh, on on the kind of wider surface that it gives us around the stem. So gotta have a pumpkin, but they can be almost any size. Uh, and we'll, you know, talk about that. <clears throat> you need some glue. Now I have seen this project done with hot glue. That's great. If that's what you've got at home, um, I'm sure hot glue is gonna work just fine. I prefer to use a craft glue. It is, um, it, this is Eileen's craft glue. It's available at craft stores. Uh, I get mine at Joann's. Um, you'll see close-ups of the product on our um, handout. But this is white when it when it when you squish it out of the bottle. It's white. It dries clear, so it's kind of easy to see. Um, cleans up water soluble, so it cleans up easily. And um, this is what we use to actually glue the succulents onto the pumpkin. But another type of glue uh, is a spray adhesive glue. Now again, 
You could probably use rubber cement and paint the pumpkin with rubber cement. But the idea of the spray adhesive, which um, is aerosol, so works like, you know, hairspray, is that we use the spray adhesive to glue a layer of sheet moss. And that's what I'll talk about next. But we glue a layer of sheet moss onto the top of the pumpkin to create uh, a surface to then glue our succulents on top of. So uh, spray adhesive, psh, moss, we glue a little toupee of moss on top of the pumpkin. Um, we can cut the stem or we can leave the stem. Kind of depends on, you know, the stem and its character and what you want to do on the top of the pumpkin. <clears throat> and uh, it, what we use, the, the spray adhesive dries really quickly. Um, so again, you just spray it on, press down on your moss, and you, uh, once that's kind of adhered to the pumpkin surface after a minute or two, um, you could either, you know, clean up your edges if you don't like the way that the edges look, uh, or just begin with the next step of the project, which is kind of designing and beginning to glue the succulents on top. Now you may be surprised to find as you um, go through the project uh, on the handout, as you're reading the steps, um, here's a little guy that I made this morning as a sample so that we can see exactly what it is that we're talking about or what we're working on. I'm sure as you signed up for the class, you also saw some really great examples of photos of finished products, projects uh, on our website as well. But this guy is just a little, uh, like a four inch or maybe six inch pumpkin. Um, perfect size for sitting on a tabletop, for example. Um, if you're having a party and you wanna go all out, you know, Martha, right? She'd probably put one of these on every table or on every place setting, for example, maybe even make it into like a name marker. So it could be like, um, Becky sits here, you know? Um, so that would be really cute. And this particular one, like I said, I just finished it. So the glue is not a hundred percent dry. We've got some flopping happening here. Um, but this particular succulent pumpkin is using a combination of some hardy hens and chicks that I just had lots of in the garden. So some of the Semper Vivums that would survive the winter outdoors. <clears throat> and then also uh, several cuttings of, well, we have our lovely little um, Calancho the kangaroo or panda Calancho, hardy and not so hardy succulents <clears throat> involved in this. Another Crassula here. This is our little elephant's, what's it called, elephant's foot or something, just another fun little succulent. And then at the last kind of final stages, after we've glued our succulent cuttings in, I've added some dried material from, again, just collecting or harvesting out of the garden. Little dried seed pods of some sort of rice grass or something, I don't know. Um, this is a hops flower, so some um, cuttings from my hops vines and just a little blip of rose hip for a, um, you know, a bit of color on this one. So of course using uh, the color of the pumpkin, whether it's orange or white or pink, that's going to help us kind of decide the colors of the cuttings that we put on here. So that um, was something that I used to consider how I designed this one. But um, going into kind of the the options, um, it's really like sky's the limit when it comes to options. Here, I'll set this guy right here for a minute. Gotta let that glue dry. <clears throat> so when we're building our succulent pumpkin, <clears throat> we're gonna make cuttings of the different cutting, different succulents themselves. So if you have like potted plants that you're starting to, uh, that you're starting with, the first thing you, you will need to do is to cut them into smaller pieces that then you will work on um, adding to your pumpkin. So on this particular one, this is an Echeveria Serena, no, Ser Serena, Serena, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna cut off, you can see it's got a big 
rosette here, a rosette here, and then the kind of primary rosette down below. Now working with succulents, they are brittle, so I guess um, first, like be gentle with them, but second, don't panic if they start to kind of shatter on you. Um, I'm gonna cut this up so you can see with a nice pair of garden snips, go right into the stem portion. Oop. And uh, take that one off. <clears throat> so that's what that one ended up as. So we have one rosette. I'll cut the next one off down here. Two. And then we actually still have that main one. It's going to be too big for the pumpkin that I'm going to do now, but it would be a good size maybe for the larger Cinderella. <clears throat> so same with something like sedum copper tone. This is one of my favorites to play with. It's got so many different colors on the rosettes and often um, has lots of little heads that you can cut off. So I've already taken a few uh, of the pieces off of this particular copper tone, but we could just continue to make cuttings using these rosettes that will then glue on to our sedum, or excuse me, onto our pumpkin. Back to the, uh, this is a portulacaria, another succulent, um, non-hardy, this little variegated uh, guy is great for, again, cutting all of these different arms that we can use um, to glue on to our pumpkin. The Calancho that I was talking about before, um, this little fun one has lots of, also, lots of pieces that we can cut up and add to our, add to our uh, project. So you can see these little pieces here. And, of course, you could go for the, you know, piece de resistance and just go big on these Echeveria uh, rosettes that are just on their own. If we were going to use one of these, there's not something to cut off unless you kind of pull it out of the dirt. To cut this one and use it for a succulent pumpkin, we're going to cut right at the soil line and just detach it. At leaving kind of a, a little bit of a stem that we can use to glue on and maybe we'll use this one but I gotta I gotta do a little bit of a design here so starting with oh and as usual if you've got you know questions or whatever just um, put them in the comment section and we will do our best to either address them now or after a class um, shaking up the adhesive spray Sounds like uh, spray paint, right? So I'm gonna just, I kind of pre-measured a little patch of moss just to see that it was gonna be right for the size of the pumpkin. I'm just gonna lift it up real quick. It's always sort of dirty. I'll just blow off the dirt. Start with a clean surface. Doesn't take a lot of the spray. And then, like I said, I've removed the stem on this one and I did that because I actually wanted to um, it wasn't it, it, it wasn't a good stem it was like all um, you know bent over and um, maybe broken or whatever so you don't always get a good stem on your pumpkin and um, in this particular project it's not that important you do see that sure on this guy I left the stem because it's cute uh, and so I thought having a hard time with the glue on this one so I thought that the stem added to the design in this case which is why we left the stem on um, but not necessarily going to be the case for every pumpkin that you encounter so while we chit chatted for a moment we've got our glue now stuck on the pumpkin little toupee um, of moss, what did I say? It's not the, the glue, the moss stuck on the pumpkin by the glue. <clears throat> so now it's on there nice and firmly. You can kind of still pick it up if you wanted. And I've got edges that I think look pretty good. 
You don't want it to come way down on the sides of the pumpkin. We're just kneading the glue onto the top surface. So don't worry if like you've got a little bit of um, moss that isn't completely stuck to the pumpkin. Um, the main portion is, so we're in good shape there. And now we're done with the spray adhesive. I know that seems like a lot of product for one spritz, but um, like I said, if you've got other glue, you could smear it with glue, whatever you need to do to get your moss to stick on it. Um, I just find the spray adhesive to be so easy to use. <clears throat> now, the size, you know, we got a decent sized pumpkin here to work with. <clears throat> and so I'm gonna kind of just see about Oh, well, that's pretty. I like that uh, burgundy. So it's kind of fun to maybe work with same colors, but a couple of different textures. I have two different types of succulents here in that same burgundy tone. Um, so maybe we work with that. This is one of those Sempervivums. Again, the hardy scent hen hens and chicks. And then this is our Calancho that I couldn't um, pronounce. Serena, Serena, I don't know. Um, so here we'll kind of mock up a design. I also think we'll do, I do think we'll add one of those. I think that's really pretty. So taking it out of the pot and getting to the point where we can cut the stem, I'll just get a little bit of this dirt off so you can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> now you can see just below the lowest leaves where that stem is uh, as, it, as it joins the soil line. So we're actually going to cut it right there and take its little head off and just discard the soil. Now, some of you might be crying because you feel like this is a big waste, um, but it's not because one of the coolest things about succulents in general is that um, all of these little pieces, this, this leaf that fell off of that succulent, this leaf can grow a whole new succulent. And uh, with this will take a little bit longer time to regrow, but our rosettes that we have cut off, even though we're gonna glue them on to the moss on top of a pumpkin and leave them for months just hanging out, these little cuttings can and will grow roots and be able to be repotted or replanted when you no longer want to look at this succulent pumpkin any longer and then you've got succulents that you can regrow from the cuttings instead of the bigger plant that you may have started with that, I don't know, maybe didn't look good anymore, maybe you don't have room for in your house. <clears throat> this little hen and chick that I just pulled off of the big plant is already rooting. And you can see all of these little hair roots that are coming off of the base of it. So I cut it from the main plant here but these little roots were just waiting to get to some soil or something like that. So those are gonna kind of root in to the moss uh, layer that we glue into. And it's helpful. I mean, you can keep this outdoors, but I would put it under cover. But the humidity of even just being outside will actually help to keep everything fresh and encourage some rooting in. If it's indoors and stays in your house, Maybe uh, twice a week, give it a, a spritz with a little uh, bottle of water. The misting is going to help give a little bit of moisture to the moss, and the moss then will promote some of that rooting of your succulents. <clears throat> so now I've taken the head off of this one, and so that'll be a fun addition. We've got these guys, this one, <clears throat> and this little Echeveria multicollis. We'll take a few of the rosettes. Look at all the roots on that one. Look at, that's just, it's just a stem, just kind of an exposed stem. But you know, when your succulents kind of fall 
fall over or the stem looks like it's gonna like lean over and lay down. Well, if this were in nature, the stem would be able to lean over, lay down. Those roots would take action holding on to the soil and allow the plant to grow a little bit further in this direction. So um, pretty cool what they can do and how they do it. So here again, we're gonna cut some rosettes to use. This is a nice one since it's just green. And I'm gonna get a couple of these bigger ones. We've got um, actually some flowers happening, which is really cute. <clears throat> so here's, this one's got a bloom stalk on top. And let me just take this one. Okay. Put our little bits aside. Now, you can clean up the bottom. And it's helpful if when you make your succulent cuttings, it's, it's quite helpful if you do it a couple of days in advance. So the, um, the cuttings are sort of, well, they're kind of wet, especially today. They're wet just because it was raining out when I grabbed them. Um, but they're, they're sort of gooey, you know, kind of full of moisture. So you can make the cuttings and then allow that cut stem to sort of dry up and scar over. That could be 24, 48 hours just sitting on the you know, kitchen counter or sitting in a box in your garage. Um, we didn't do that today and it's gonna be just fine. We're gonna go ahead and glue them on and they'll scar over while they kind of sit on the succulent uh, or sit on the pumpkin themselves. <clears throat> so now we have our craft glue. This again, um, dries clear but we can kind of see how we're, uh, it's easy to see rather than a clear glue already. So I'm just gonna put a little blob, I don't have to put a ton of glue on, put a little blob, and sometimes I'll put one or two <clears throat> on the edges that are gonna touch the pumpkin. And you gotta start somewhere, right? So I just put one on. Again, when you're pressing, just use gentle pressure with enough, just with time and drying, it will dry on to the pumpkin. So we don't need to like push, push hard, uh, but a little bit of pressure just to make sure that there's contact. <coughs> and when we are building the, uh, the design, you want to start with some of your larger, you know, kind of start in the center and start with some of the larger material. And just like you see on the example that I had, uh, as you want to glue and kind of press your, your material in towards the center, sort of tight, as the glue holds and dries, things will relax just a little bit. So even though this is kind of tilted into the center, as it glues and dries, it may sort of come out just a little bit how I actually want it. So press it a little tight and expect things to sort of loosen just a little bit as they dry. <clears throat> and it's good to give it some time, you know, between the actual wet glue um, to the drying of the glue before you expect things, you know, to not be like falling off or be a little bit um, loose. So here we've got number one in, and we're gonna put these two dark cuttings, kind of just complementing it. These are bigger cuttings, so they're, he they're top heavy, right? So we need to <clears throat> sort of nestle them in and possibly give them support by gluing in something right next to them that's gonna hold them up. So a nice dollop, we'll say. This dollop of glue, and that's sort of getting pushed into um, like the center hole where the um, where the stem was. Okay, now I'm going to hold that while I also, with the same hand, <coughs> grab another one. Dollop of glue. <clears throat> And it's okay if your glue drops uh, on something. Like I said, it's going to dry clear. Okay, and we're going to just 
Nestle that in. <clears throat> and then I need to support it. So I'm going to support it with this other Ecveria rosette. I'll do another dab here and here. Okay, so this is gonna get kind of tucked up. Again, you've gotta be delicate with this one or it'll break apart. But I wanna kind of push it close so that it helps to support these taller, heavier guys. Okay, just holding. Now, we need some green contrast. Oops, see they're brittle. Some green contrast. Little glue, you don't have to go crazy with the glue. And more in close to hold up that little guy. Another. And you can take a few of the leaves off of the stem because you're going to be shoving that stem in anyways. So if there's leaves um, low down on your cut stem, they'll, they'll probably break off anyhow. Okay, get that in. I'm going to turn it around. You can see. Push it up in there nice and snug. And that helps to lift this guy up and support it. Okay. Oop, delicate. Again, yep, everything's holding. Now, we'll get I do you think it's getting dark over here? So maybe we put this guy. So here I've got a really short stem. I'm going to remove just a couple of leaves. So I, because I'm going to push that into the moss anyways, those leaves would probably come off. Glue on this. Nice and tight. Hold for a minute because this is kind of a fat one. It's going to pull a little bit, so I want to give it some support and wait for that glue to dry just a hair. <clears throat> and you can see how we're now playing with some kind of contrasting colors. It was looking a little dark with all of these guys together, so I want to give it a nice green kind of contrast. Now, let's see. I don't think we need to bring in the copper tone color. I think that that's prettier with oranges, uh, but this little calancho is fun. So I did cut a few pieces of that. We'll put that in. That needs to be a shorter stem. We'll just cut it shorter. And I mean, you know, again, cut long, pieces so that you can start with something long and then if you decide that you want it shorter it's easy always easy to make things shorter so where does this need to go i think maybe kind of right in here cute get another one just a little shorter pull that leaf off <clears throat> now um because you need to buy, you know, a package of moss, let's say, and because you need to buy a bottle of glue or two. This is a really fun project to do with friends. Uh, this is a perfect kind of thing to, uh, you know, set up a spot in your garage or in the, I would do it in my living room, uh, just put a drop cloth down or something invite people over maybe have your friends so those were kind of sorry i'm going to interrupt myself these were sort of floppy and fallen over everything needs to kind of settle in the glue so because these were floppy i grabbed this little 
Semper Vivum button and I just glued it in for a nice uh, support. But anyways, have some friends come over, buy a bottle of glue, get a package of moss, <clears throat> invite them all to bring their own pumpkin, for example, and maybe bring something cool from their garden. Um, come with some harvested goodies like rose hips out of my garden or the hops that we harvested from the garden. We also have dried hydrangea flowers, which are beautiful um, when they're kind of um, broken into smaller pieces. So this is a big flower that will then kind of deconstruct into smaller little flower bundles that are great to be tucked into your succulent pumpkin as kind of a final um, bling, we call it, final bling. So here, here's what we're working with now. <clears throat> and I need something sort of a little bit of movement. I've got this fun uh, top flower bud, but I think it would be nice to have something sort of coming down the sides. And that's where this wonderful succulent uh, Portulacaria Afra variegated is a good example. Cut some of these little dangly legs off, arms, legs, whatever they are. Maybe, I mean, I'm always kind of working in threes if possible. So here's our pieces. We're gonna make a stem by just removing that one's good. Just enough glue on the end. Let's tuck. All right, so now that's kind of bringing that burgundy around too. Have to just push it in there enough that it looks like it's part of the situation. Um, I think I'm gonna do the same, just kind of to bulk this out. So you can, I mean, it's not exactly thriller, filler, spiller, but a similar idea by using some different textures, heights, um, colors, obviously, and taking that into consideration. So you can see how that has kind of helped. Oh. You can see how that has kind of helped to uh, balance out the other side, although the other side just unbalanced. Uh, maybe a little re-gluing. That may happen to you, and that's just fine. We'll get it right back in there. and maybe hold it a little bit better this time. See, everything's, not, not everything's falling apart, so it's not the end of the world. We'll add this little guy over here as maybe another bit of support for that heavy one that wants to fall out. Lift up and kind of tuck it in there. And until it glues, as you can, or until the glue dries, as you can see, you can kind of reposition things as you need or want. Okay, so here we have kind of arrived at, I think, <clears throat> I think we're done with the succulent portion of the succulent pumpkin. Uh, now always, you know, less is more. So remember um, not to just, you know, cover the whole pumpkin with your succulents and go crazy. Even this may be uh, maybe a little over the top, but it's for a demo, right? So even uh, sometimes success is called for. Now, as I said, the bling. The bling on this could be are little bits of dried hydrangea, which I think are nice because they help to lighten the project. <clears throat> Depending on your colors, seasonal berries are great. Our rose hips um, with this sort of 
coral orange color would also be really pretty in there. If not the airy hydrangeas, the hops flowers are really fun. Anything that you may have dried at home. I've also got some, well, so some dried celosia. This happens to be a pink one, which I think will go really nicely with the pink colors of our succulents. <clears throat> but also all just all sorts of dried flowers. You could do dried roses, just little dried things that you maybe pick up at the flower market or that you, you know, gather from your own garden at home. Poppy pods are great. Uh, acorns are fun. <clears throat> so here we are going to do a couple of these coxcomb pieces. They were fresh uh, when we got them, so we've hung them for a couple of weeks just upside down, so now they've dried nicely. I'm gonna cut that stem at a length I think is right. Kind of see where we put that. Maybe over here. So a little glue. it into the side here and to complement it just grab again not much to glue onto these fine stems of the hydrangea bits but they can also just be kind of tucked in there anyways um, it's not like they're gonna pull themselves out like those heavy bits of succulents do so just Tuck that. Now, maybe one more to balance it on this side of the celosia. Let's see, actually, let's do it right in here. I think that'd be cute. Okay, and Hydrangea bits. Let's see. Got that one. I could do the hops, but I think, you know, again, kind of limiting your materials once I've chosen the hydrangea bits, I'm best to stay with those for the for the project. I just don't want to get it too complicated with too many different materials. Just Tuck it in there. Again, a little brittle. You could probably use like a stick, like tweezers. Here, I've got a little stick to kind of poke. Maybe a chopstick or something will help work in to the areas that need it. And the last thing we need, I think, is maybe, so lift this up and show and cute but it's a little bare on the back side so of course um you know you could be you could have one view of the whole thing and just look at it from one direction but i think that will add we'll add a little bit of this Again, kind of tucking it up in there. And maybe one more of the celosia. This arrangement, so again, many of us have seen this done. Um, on pumpkins, perhaps, that have been carved. Um, there are some fun projects that 
involve cutting open the pumpkin, scooping out the bits, and then planting succulents into the pumpkin um, or planting anything. You could plant a, a chrysanthemum or a flowering cabbage or something. But as soon as you cut into the pumpkin, um, most of us know that the pumpkin starts to rot. It just begins to decay from there. Because this project does not cut into the pumpkin, the pumpkin itself lasts a very long time. Um, if you have just, you know, gotten a couple of these little decorative guys and sat them out on your, I don't know, sideboard or coffee table, um, in, in many cases, they will just slowly fade and dry and um, last for months. We have seen these projects as we start them in, um, well, this isn't even October yet, right? So often we start them at the end of September or early October, and this very same project is still with you in the new year. Um, so it is something that you can celebrate fall, then even potentially, you know, if you did a white pumpkin, you could uh, transition this into more holiday feel. Um, but it really is one of those things that will be with you potentially until spring. Uh, in, in that case, you can then take the succulents off of the moss on the pumpkin and now just replant them into soil outside as long as you're past frost. Or you can simply disassemble and take those rooted cuttings and now just plant them in houseplant soil indoors or like a succulent houseplant soil indoors and then uh, care for them like young succulents with bright light and kind of limited watering until they get, uh, a until they're able to be moved outside when you're past the, the last frost. A little spritzing, as I mentioned, will keep them um, plump and uh, lush but in most cases, even just a, a little outside time will, you know, again, porch cover or not out in the rain, but a little outside time will give them the extra humidity that they need to kind of stay happy. You can be um, as creative as your imagination lets you and um, come up with lots of fun uh, different moss alternatives. So of course, instead of the sheet moss that we're using, which as I mentioned, so this is super moss sheet moss, and it comes in a whole bunch of different colors. You can see all these different colors here. So available in a lot of different colors. You could use natural moss, um, just harvested from you know your own trees or whatever. You could use uh, the kind of shaggy silvery gray moss known as Spanish moss. It's a little bit more stringy, um, but would still look really cool in your uh, creation. And um, all of the dried bits, again, all of your imagination of all of the things that you could use at home, poppy pods, rose hips, berries that you may have, uh, grass flowers or inflorescence of flowers or grasses um, look around and just see what um, see what looks beautiful to you that you could cut and harvest and glue on a pumpkin with your uh, friends or just on a nice crafty day like today if any other questions arise or you need to know where to get some of these things um, Post your comments in the comment section. We will respond as we can. And as usual, everyone, thanks for watching. Happy gardening.